Good morning and welcome to Coffee and Create. I'm going to try this another way. So as you see the products coming up across your screen, just know that these are all the different products that we're offering you at a special price in May on our Coffee and Create collection on the twogirlstreasure.com website. These are also all the products that we've been using as we have been going through the month of May with you. I'm gonna turn this camera down just a little bit because I have shifted my workspace this morning. It's been a lot of fun. Here we go. All right, y'all ready? Good morning, how are you? I'm Diane, I am the proprietor of Two Girls Treasure right here in Florence, South Carolina. Say hello. That's my little wire right there. Let's see if I can hook that back so it's not in the way. How was your Mother's Day? Happy Mother's Day to you. I hope you had a fabulous time. I hope everything in your world was wonderful. I hope the kids came to visit with you. Now, because we've been having such a technical difficulty, I'm gonna pop on over here real quick and see which channels I'm on because I wanna make sure you can see this. It was so much fun Saturday creating vessels for, oh, I used the Rethunk Junk, didn't I? Sorry, it's Coffee and Create. It was so much fun to create the vessels for Mother's Day. There we go. And let's see if it's working on our website because it has not been. And let's see, let's see. I'm excited to see if it's gonna work. I don't think so, but we're gonna try it. It was so exciting to have the make and takes on Saturday for Mother's Day. I love being able to create handcrafted gifts. And Saturday was no exception. We had a pour. If you've never seen a pour done with Rethunk Junk paint products, well, you should have been here to see Sarah's pour. It was beautiful. And Leanne made a beautiful vessel. And yep, our live shopping on our website is still not working. That's okay. I'll tell you what, you can always shop the Coffee and Create collection on our website. And in the month of May, you can use the coupon code PICNIC and you can use the coupon code TABLE and you will save on all the special products that we just showed you, that I just showed you, that are on that Coffee and Create collection. I don't want to run through the whole list, but I will if you want me to. Say good morning when you pop in. I want to show you some of these vessels. So when I say vessels, I take my tins and I want to recreate it into something amazing and beautiful and useful that is not going to go into the landfill. It's just a little Puroline cookie can. Cute as it can be, they were tasty. It's now empty, it has a wonderful lid. I think we can put a little knob on top and paint this and paint our butterflies and our flower droops. And we can make this something very useful for the home. I'm not gonna work on that today, but you get the idea. And a terracotta planter, they're so plain. Look, look, they are so plain. There's nothing there. It just has a lip edge and it's so plain. But what if your plants could live in something that looks like this instead? So much better, so much better. And this is a beautiful crock. Look how cute this is gonna be 
with a little bit of paint and glaze on it. It has a salt wash finish because I had some salt wash left over from last week's tutorial. And so I can put a color over this and I can either leave it with texture or I can sand it back and get some of the textural elements across the top of this. I think this is cute too. This is just a cute little brass planter. I've used it, look, it has dirt in it. I've used it before, but it's, it's just gold colored and it needed some love. So now it has a fairy door and it has some greenery. And I think we can add some elements to this and make it really cute. This is not what I want to work on today either. This is a little crock. How many times do you throw these things away or you see them for a quarter a piece or, you know, a dime at a yard sale because no one knows exactly what to do with them? Recreate them. Give them some molds. Give them some color. Give them some life and let them live and be happy. I'm not gonna work on that one either. I did finish this one on Saturday. Look at my chameleon, he's so cute. As long as he's not alive and crawling around in here, I need to put some green on him. But this planter was done with salt wash and I just simply added the element of the outdoors to him. I'm not gonna work on that one today either. What am I gonna work on? Well, let me show you. I have a planter that I already put my dragonflies and my butterflies and a little ladybug on. There's my sweet little ladybug right there. And if you'll notice, this has a little bit different color than this. It's because this has been sealed inside and out. I took my tough top or my flat top, I can't remember which one I had in my hand, but I just took it and I took my stain pad and I put a little bit on it and I wiped down the outside and I wiped down the inside. So that way, once I finish painting and I put my pretty little plant in here, I don't have to worry about the moisture from the dirt and when I water it, popping any of my elements off. So I wanna work on this today. I also really, 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 really wanna to add to this. Now, this is my cutie little country pig in ruby red and dry brushed on the bottom edge with some cloud. My little piggy's done in cloud. <clears throat> I want to take my checkered stamp, my pretty and plaid, and I want to do just this rim edge. And yes, I'm copying Sarah. She inspired me with one of the projects she did that I thought was so super cute. So I do want to work on this. Good morning, Nancy. How are you? Now this one, this one is my favorite. So for Mother's Day, my people let me do some of my own work in my own little space. I made these little wooden planter boxes. Some of them are bigger. Some of them have a hole and have a handle through them. I have one that I put a rope handle on. These are so easy to make. These are all made from reclaimed lumber. They're treated lumber, so this is perfect for the outdoor, but it was reclaimed treated lumber. So it was just very plain and I painted it white and I knew I would get to it and I'm going to. So I even painted the inside, that's my clay. That's what I did not use. But I started painting the outside. Little bit of color movement. <gasps> Look at my toadstools and my dragon and my mountains and my greenery. And it fades over into the other side with my clouds. Done in cloud with some, some outline, some highlight in pearl, but that leaves this backside just plain, just plain. Well, if you are like me and you love fairies and you love the fairy tale, 
then you know you can take one of these fairy doors. I've got two. I've done them in resin and they need a life. Which one do you love? The gold and the black or the cherry red and gold? I really love this one. I love that when I cast the resin, it left some gaps so you can see through the door in certain places. What a great fairy door. Which one do you love? But I thought if I took a fairy door and some of my darker colors well it would be like entering a fairy door from one side and exiting into another world in the outdoors and in between will be my pretty little plants what do you think the red the cherry red and gold or the gold and black i really like the gold and black y'all centered not centered what would you do Let's glue one of these on here, and while it's drying, we'll work on our piggy pot. I like our piggy pot. Now, see, I'll take a vessel of any kind. Anybody care to take a guess at what this vessel is or was before? It needs some molds on it to make it more beautiful, but it has a good start right now. Take a guess at what this is. And I have a free gift for you. I made some toadstools out of polymer clay also. Aren't those great? Polymer clay is a whole other thing. Have you played with it? If you have not, let me show you. I haven't done the double camera yet. Let me do the double camera so you can see really, really good. Look at that. Look at that. Here comes our train. He's right on time at 9.19 a.m. Wait for it. Here comes that train horn to go with my toadstools. I love these toadstools. There he is. And I made dragons. I made resin dragons. These are left over from experimenting for Sarah's birthday party because we host birthday parties here. And Sarah's theme was dragons. So I made some resin dragons for Sarah's birthday party. And if you have fairy doors and toadstools, you're safe because you have dragons to protect you. Good morning, Lynette, how are you? All right, now that you're here, Lynette, what do you think? Which fairy door, the cherry red and black or the gold and black? Which fairy door would you use if you were gonna do a vessel? Tell me quick, because I'm getting ready to glue. I have my quick and thick. I usually store it upside down. Now, do you want to see a vessel gone wrong? Let me show you that. So let me show you the last one that went right. This is a cutie little tall French flower pot. I did a little bit of texturizing just by brushing it, and I added my fairy door to it and I added a frog and toadstools. I love to reuse vessels, but what happens when it goes wrong? Well, the vision was here. I've, I've ripped some off, so I have ragged edges and I have glue that I don't like. And so this is just an old coffee pot and it's so old, the red and black Lynette, thank you. It's just so old, the handle was crusty and it wasn't real pretty and it's still not pretty, but I have the idea, I have the thought process. So I will work with this again, just not today. It'll happen. Sometimes you have to start something and then step back away from it and rethink your position and what you're thinking and what you can do and then then do it. All right, the red and black. I love this one too, Lynette. It's the one that has the uh, little gaps in it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So let's add, let's add this and I will kick you over to the solo view. We'll move the stamps on down the road so you can see the whole thing. This is such a cute little box. I love making these. 
quick and thick is, just so you know, there is no part of this that is not thick and goopy and I know I'm at the end, but my problem is that I didn't store it properly. That's, that's the problem. I stored it standing up instead of upside down, so now I'm suffering the consequence and I will take my paintbrush and I will just do the mom thing and pull it on out of there. Make sure when you get ready to glue your castings on that you bring your glue all the way to the edge. You wanna make sure that edge has a good coat. You wanna make sure the center has a good coat, but you don't have to over glue it. I don't like it when it squishes out. That's why I usually like using a brush to apply the glue on my castings. That way I don't have glue squishing out the sides. I can make sure that my entire casting is covered. And I'm gonna pour a little bit of water in this other cup. There we go, because I don't want my glue cup, I don't want my glue paint brush in with my paint paint brushes. So I'm gonna flip this over and I might put it just off to the side a little bit. Let's see, where's my dragon? My dragon's on this side. Let's make it a portal. Let's just make it a portal. We'll put it right here. Now, I have glue coming through on the top side, you see? And what I'll do is I'll wipe off my wet paintbrush, the one I just used to put the glue on, and I'll clean that up. So swish it around. Try to get some try to get some of the glue off and don't dry it out. You want to make sure there's a little bit of moisture on the brush to help get that extra glue off. There we go. Because we don't want that glue gumming up our pretty little door. And it's in places where we don't need it. We don't need that glue on the top side. A little bit more water. This is a water-based glue which I absolutely adore. So that way it's easy to clean up as long as you do it really quickly. If you let that dry, it's just gonna be there and you'll not get it off. So I'm gonna wipe it down gently and that sort of helps press it into place. I think you're right, Lynette. I think this door is perfect. Kind of coordinates with the wild berry that I put right over the top of the mountains little bit of color just a little bit of vivid imagination on this one you don't have to believe in fairies but if you have a wild imagination and you dream in technicolor this is your kind of thing and of course you can just simply put the molds on you can make it simple and cute. It doesn't have to be extraordinary. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be all the extra. But you know, if you know me, if you know, you know, I like to be a little bit extra when I'm doing my work. I've got a little ring of glue. I'm just going to cap it. And I'm going to put the little lid back on and I'm gonna put it upside down in my cup. That way when I get ready, it's ready. All right, I'll move my other one and we'll let this dry before we do any paint work around the edges of it. And that'll give us a few minutes to work with my piggy pot. Let's get the piggy pot out. Love my piggy pot, it's so cute. His leg separated just a little bit. Now let me tell you about my molds. I actually took, um, once I put my clay into my cavity in my mold and I got it straightened out, I put the molds in the freezer and I left them there for a while, not even a little while. I mean, I left them there for a long while. They were frozen solid. And when I took them out, they were perfectly cast. 
Now, I didn't do that with my piggy pot. I did that with these and my dragonfly wing cracked right there. Not really a big deal. It just separated from the body. But my other castings are absolutely perfect and I let these dry without painting them. Very little shrinkage and very little cracking. You kind of have to expect that clay is going to crack because it's clay. It's a natural substance. I'm gonna use this piece. I've used it before, but look at that perfect checkerboard. And let's see, I am going to use my white paint, which means I need my brayer. And I'm positive I got one out. You know I have one right here in front of me. You know I just can't see it. Now this is, this is cotton. I'm looking for my cloud and I have it right, right here, right here. When you put your paint in a, in a separate vessel, and I say this because I'm probably lecturing myself more than anything, but when you put your clay in a separate vessel, you might want to put a piece of tape on it and mark your While I'm right here grabbing my brayer, my studio has overgrown and we have something happening for that. Stay tuned. I'll tell you all about it before we go today. Don't let me forget. Don't let me forget. All right, since I'm right here, I'm gonna take my mixing white. I know it has green on the top. Don't. Don't pay any attention to the green on the top. It's what's inside that matters. And I'm just going to get the clay off my acetate and I'm gonna put, all of this is dry on here, by the way. I use these thin mounts to put my stamps on. I use these thin mounts to put my ink on, my paint on. I, I use, use these thin mounts. I go through a lot of them. They're not very expensive, but, you, but you've got to have them for the projects that you're working on, without a doubt. So I've got my little handy baby wipes out. Let's, um, let's, put, let's put some checkerboard around. And I think we could do just that center section. We'll get a lot more done a lot quicker. Let me turn the light on so you can see better. That is not, I just don't even like that color light. How does that work? There we go. There we go. I think I'll use just the center section. So let's get a good load on the brayer. Roll it and lift it and roll it and lift it and roll it and lift it. And then your brayer is completely covered with a nice thin layer of ink so you can coat your stamp easily and thoroughly. You want a nice good load on your stamp so that when you turn it over and you get ready to stamp your surface, I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see. When you get ready to turn it over and stamp your surface, you've got enough ink on there to do what you intend. Now I'm on a round surface with a silicone stamp. That is not easy to do. So very gently, and I smeared it a little bit, but it just makes it look a little more country. I love that. It looks like ribbon around the top edge. Now I'm gonna have to be super duper careful because my top lip edge is wet. This is where the flexi stamper comes in really handy, Mel. And if I had mine out, I'd be using it. If you have a flexi stamper, it just gives you something to use to have more control over your silicone stamp as you're stamping a surface, especially when it's round. Now I'm getting ink on my fingers and that means I'm getting ink in places on my pot that I don't intend. 
So I'm just gonna take my baby wipe and I'm gonna rub that a little bit. Because it's ink and not paint, that's not gonna come off easily. I've got my fingerprint right there. We definitely want that off of there. I can come back and touch the red up where I didn't get it off and it'll be okay. It's really hard to do that rim edge and not smear it or get it on your hands. I'm gonna put just a little bit more ink on my stamp. I've put it on twice now. This will be the third time, so I wanna make sure on that third time I've got another fresh load of ink. And we're right here to right here. I don't have quite enough, but I'm close. And I think if I turn this over and set it down, I know you can't see now and I'm sorry, but I think if I do that, then I can keep my edge steady. And I can just stamp straight across there. Might not get the whole thing. There we go. And just a little piece more I'm kind of overlapping what I've already done, but it's okay. Once it dries, if it's a little strong, I can sand it back, give it a little distressing. In the meantime, that's the cutest little piggy pot, and I don't know what kind of plant I'm going to put in it, but it is going to be a happy little plant. Got it a little smeary. I should have had my I should have had my flexi stamper. That little rubber part inside the flexi stamper, that that thing really really helps out. I love my piggy pot in red and white. This is ruby red cloud and this is your mixing white ink on the pretty in plaid stamp set. Let's talk about IOD for a minute. We have two things happening this week that are just crazy. One, well, we have a price increase coming and that just hurts my feelings. And it came yesterday. So if you're purchasing any of your favorite Iron Orchid designs, you'll notice there's a price increase and I am sorry. It breaks my heart. I'm gonna clean this off while we lament the price increases that we're living through. And I'll tell you this, it'll be okay. I had every intention of having a live sale on Saturday to save you some money on these Iron Orchid Design products before I had to increase the price. However, because our streaming software is not working exactly like it needs to, we just couldn't get that done. And this morning it's still not working, so we just can't get that done. But if you will be patient with me, I will figure out an alternate plan. And we will still have a sale on Iron Orchid Designs in spite of the price increase. And just in time for the price increase, our brand new release will be here in days to come. They will not be available to you to view and purchase quite yet, not quite yet but they'll be here. I cleaned that off a little bit better. And let's wipe this down too, because I have a plan. It'll be okay. We'll get through it together. Price increases, well, they stink because everybody's gone up on their prices on everything we use, all the things we need, and most of the things we just want. It'll be okay. We will have a sale for you and you will be able to save on the things you really want. 
only because I love y'all and you have been so supportive and I want to continue to keep your business here at Two Girls Treasure so we can continue to survive the times. And I think we will. I think we'll be just fine. I'm prayerful. But in the meantime, we'll have a sale and we will enjoy what we have. P.S. We also have a uh, Memorial Day sale on our Rethunk Junk Paint products. Buy one, get one 20% off. I think we leave this in white and I think we stamp this in the plaid with red. I like that idea, let's do it. Let's do it. Red and white checker, yes please. Ruby red is absolutely beautiful. We have this cutie little patootie sheep. This is a utensil crock, so won't this look great if you have a picnic? I'm scooting around looking for a screwdriver. One of my little handy dandy tools. Here it is. Because you know, Y'all know I put the lid back on this and it's glued shut. So I'm just gonna take my screwdriver and gently loosen the edge, just gently. There we go. Oh, buy one Rethunk Junk paint product, $16 minimum, and get your second one for 20% off. That's kind of a deal right there, isn't it? Buy one, get the second one for 20% off, Anything that is in stock is eligible for the discount. All right. Now let me move my little sheep over and I'm gonna put my little ruby red paint swatch in the middle. I'm gonna load my brayer, touch and roll, pick up, touch and roll, pick up, touch and roll and pick up and get a good load, thin, even coat on the brayer. I don't need it all the way across. This is not a big piece of stamp. Let's get all the red on there. And let me close this so I don't knock it over. There we go. Scooch this out of the way. I've got a little bit right here on the end I don't want to make a mess, so I'm just going to ooch that off and get another baby wipe. And let's start, let's start right underneath his feet. Yeah, let's start right there. Cute, cute, cute. Be real careful not to move it when it's on a rounded surface. If you have a flexi stamper, it really comes in handy right here. If you don't, get one. Do you want me to show you how to use the flexi stamper when you're doing this? I can grab it. I think he looks adorable sitting on a checkered ribbon. I love it. Yep, I should grab the Flexi Stamper. Hold for just a second. Look how cute he is. And I'll go back in the studio, and that's the other thing. You know? Here we go. As we have grown, as we have changed, as we have shifted, we need more studio space, don't we? I think so. So we have conjured up a plan for that. Now this is your Flexi Stamper. It has the protective acetate sheet over it. Take that off. It has your acrylic back plate. This was made for stamping knobs for a chest of drawers or a dresser. <clears throat> Put that to the side too. This little silicone piece right here, it's stretchy a little bit, it's flexible a lot. 
It's just like your silicone stamp, except it's not a stamp. So what can you do with it? Let me show you the difference in control that it gives you when you're getting ready to stamp something. So I'm gonna take my piece of stamp and I'm gonna lay it down on my flexi stamper. I'm gonna give myself room at the top and bottom, that way I've got somewhere to grab hold. This flexi stamper with my silicone stamp with no acetate on the back of it is gonna give me the type of control just like my acetate does. But it's flexible, so it'll allow me to move around curved surfaces. Now, I might be wrong, but I think there might be a product on the shelf at one of the thrift box stores. That's the nice way to say that, isn't it? The thrift box stores, like, you know, Dollar Tree. I think I might be able to find a silicone piece at Dollar Tree that I can do this with. But since I have my Flexi Stamper, I'm gonna put my Pretty and Plaid stamp on my Flexi Stamper. I'm going to make sure I've got a good load of my Ruby Red on my brayer. And I'm gonna gently bray my stamp piece so that I've got enough paint on there. Let's roll this a little bit. I'm using a paintbrush to block it so it doesn't roll. Now, just like you would do if you had a piece of acetate, flip it over. Let me put my glasses on so I can see where I am. Line up your edges. And now, now I have something to hang on to. Now I have something between me and my slippery fingers and my surface. And it just helps me to control the stamp better. It didn't slip, it just stamped. And I know I'm not doing it perfectly, don't care, love it anyway. It's so cute. I love that red ribbon. All right, let's turn it over and let's go again. I'll put another paintbrush underneath it to keep the wet paint off the table. So that way we don't mess up our image. I've got one paintbrush underneath it, one paintbrush on each side of it. We've got this thing blocked so it's not going anywhere. A little bit more of the ruby red on the brayer, on the stamp, and knock it over, pick it back up, just keep going. Don't let anything slow you down. All right, let's do this end to end. I might not have enough to go all the way around, but we'll get close on this one, I think. Line it up, bring it around, lay it down, and just a little piece on the in-between right here. And presto magico, we have the cutest little sheep container to keep our utensils in in the kitchen. What an adorable little piece. I love it. I love it. Now I can take this and add some white glaze to it, or I can take this and add some antique glaze to it and give it a really pretty aged finish. I can even use my Cracklure stamp on here. I don't think I need any other color but just the white. I wonder... I wonder what cotton over the top of cloud with salt wash would look like sanded back. Do you think that would make it look a little more rustic? What do you think? Because this is cloud with a little bit of salt wash in it, so it has that texture, and there's some texture pieces right here. And if I put cotton over the top of the cloud and sanded it back, 
I wonder what it would look like. I think it would look a little more rustic, a little more farmhouse -y. What do you think? We might try that. We might try that. In the meantime, while we are thinking that part through, so we actually offer all the products in each month that we use for these live tutorials. Cotton over cloud, I think so too, Miss Judy, thank you. We offer a collection called Coffee and Create Collection and every month we plan ahead and we prepare for the month with all of the colors and the products and then we offer them to you at a discount especially when the live streaming works on our website unlike today but you can still do it the coupon codes are picnic and table when you buy any two pints use the coupon code picnic and get a discount when you buy the two pints and two glaze two pints two glazes picnic you get a discount two pints two glazes and the stamps La Campagna and Pretty in Plaid, then you get an extra discount on all of it. Check out the details on our website under the Coffee and Create collection for May. And since we're coming to an end soon, can you believe that? How are we coming to the end of May so soon? Today is the 16th. On the last day of the month, every month, is our traditional Smalls on Saturday class. You bring your own small piece, and IOD still offer Flexi Stamper. I think they retired it, Miss Judy. So you have to find a retailer who has them in stock. And I'm gonna scour Dollar Tree to see if they have a flexible piece of silicone mat that we can use. I'm sure if you use a Cricut, uh, there's a flexible silicone mat. I have just always found this to be more useful in stamping round surfaces than I have ever found it to be useful for me in stamping knobs because I don't stamp that many knobs. But you can do Smalls on Saturday with us. Now on May 27th, I recognize that it is Memorial Day weekend. You can do Smalls on Saturday with us one time only and that's just fine. Come do your class, prep it, paint it, personalize it, and take it home when it's dry. Or you can be here, good morning Char. You can be here for the reveal of the June Coffee and Create collection. That'll be only in person. And you can join us two more times in the studio and design your piece throughout the month of June while we show you all the different ways that we use the products during Coffee and Create. So you can do the Smalls on Saturday workshop or you can do the Smalls on Saturday design workshop series. Either one will be fabulous and you'll get to spend time in the studio with us. Now about this studio, I'm right in the middle of the store, which has been fantastic, fabulous, wonderful. We've involved so many people in Rethunk Junk paint products and Iron Orchid designs and salt wash and it's been wonderful. But as with all good things, we have outgrown this space. So over the next several weeks, we will be redesigning a portion of the store and it will be strictly the studio at Two Girls Treasure. Stay tuned for details on how you can participate with your annual membership to the studio at Two Girls Treasure limited unlimited access you will be able to use our products you will be able to purchase your products if you are a member you will save 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 and you will have a fabulous time with instruction with one-on-one -on -one, with parties with gatherings with quiet time that you need just to create something special 
The studio at Two Girls Treasure is coming soon to Two Girls Treasure. So just stay tuned for details, and if you want to come help move furniture, we'll be glad for you to do that. We're, we're, um, we're going to be moving some furniture and tables and supplies, and everything will be in its own studio space. I'm excited about that. And we won't be blinded by the light first thing in the morning. We will still hear the train on Tuesday morning during Coffee and Create. Char, he never lets me down. It's like he knows we're in here having a conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today for Coffee and Create. The May Coffee and Create collection includes the Pretty in Pink, Pretty in Plaid, I, I loved that movie. Maybe we should do some pink plaid. Pretty in plaid, which will be in in days to come, along with our brand new Iron Orchid Designs release. Stay tuned for that. Price increase, I'm really sorry. Your brayer, your thin mount, your ruby red, your cloud, your farmhouse navy, your paint brushes, your La Campagna. Those are all included in our May Coffee and Create collection. Make sure you use your coupon code PICNIC. Save when you purchase two pints and two glazes. And if you buy two pints, two glazes, and two stamps from Iron Orchid Designs, you save even more. Use the coupon code table at checkout. Yes, you can use both of those coupon codes as long as you purchase the products in the Coffee and Create collection. Even though we're not live on our website today, just search for the Coffee and Create collection tab and all of the May products will be there. May 27th, we will shift over to our June collection. Stay tuned for that. And if you have any questions or you want to purchase in person, come on by the store and see us. We are always open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. right here at the PD State Farmers Market in Florence, South Carolina. I'm Diane Pruitt. Thank you so much for joining us today. Share this video. Give us some hearts and love and we will look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for being here.